Hey y'all, it's Dawn at Daydream Manor Flower Farm. Um, I am in Zone 8B in South Louisiana, and today, <laughs> surprise, surprise, coming to you from the stem shed. <laughs> oh, the weather has been funky this morning. It started raining really early. Um, it's finally stopped. We have a little bit of a break for a couple of hours, and I needed to get out here, do some watering, and thought I would take advantage of this time just to give you a quick update on what's been happening around here. So, um, well, one thing is you're going to see this in real time, uh, pretty, pretty darn close to real time. Uh, normally, I'm able to um, video, you know, the week before for the following week, and that has just not worked out. Um, between uh, my work trip, the follow-up work from that work trip, um, catching up with the work that I missed from that trip, like, and just life in general, it has been just a super stacked week. So, um, this I'm shooting now, going to edit it very quickly, because y'all know I'm a one-take wonder here, um, and then I'm going to get it posted. So, you're seeing this in real time. So, let's get caught up. <sighs> All right. I was able, finally, um, to start my bouquet subscriptions. Uh, my last video, I talked about, you know, I, I sent out an email to all my subscribers and was like, look, flowers are not coming in like I expected. We didn't have the ranunculus that, you know, I really was depending on. Um, everything else is just slow growing. I don't know. It's just been a, it's been a challenge. This season has been by far the toughest um in, in my growth season so um i i sent out that email and just just like if y'all stay with me um it just means that you'll be on a staggered delivery and so which means more work for me in the long run because i usually do deliveries every other sunday um to everyone and it's just not going to happen it's not happening that way um and there may be two or three there may be a third week in there before you get your next one and so i explained it all in an email because i do a newsletter um, i try to do one monthly during grow season just to keep people updated and engaged and y'all have the best customers the best clients i'm, I'm just going to put that out there every last one was like nope we're in it for the long haul we understand you know can't control mother nature nope we're in it <sighs> so I'm super thankful for that. I was able to get out some bouquets um, last Sunday. And so tomorrow I have a list of people I have to go finish, which, thank gosh, um, sunflowers came in. Um, those are the ones that I started at the end of February. I said I was going to push the envelope again this year. Yeah, they just started blooming, and I was able to harvest enough to get halfway through my subscriptions Um last week and so this week will be the other half and then i'm trying to debate if i'm gonna hold off on the ones i did last week and try to catch them up so we're back on a schedule truthfully it depends on these warm season flowers um you know zinnias are zinnias are taken off i'm gonna go out there today and have a little look and i'll take you along with me but you know it's just it's not how i envisioned this year so again changing course um my my goal this year was to do the bulk of my subscriptions very early spring so that during the summer when it's 110 degrees outside i don't have to deal with the heat and all of those things um those elements but yeah it's just not working out that way so we're just moving on um what else uh, la, 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 la. oh okay here's what i want to tell y'all um I had a question well I actually had two people email me about new flat their new flower farmers and they wanted to know if I thought X amount of dollars um, and both people both both of the emails it was very interesting both of the people had different numbers plugged in sounded like a good number to start um, for a budget for a flower farm y'all here's what I'm gonna say I, I, I think financial literacy is extremely important um, I, y'all know, I am not one that is going to go into debt to do this flower farm. That has, that I have said that from the beginning, and I'm going to continue to say that. I think only you can make the decision. What you can afford to put out that doesn't disrupt your household budget. Um, I, 
you know, I, I'm very careful with where I'm spending my money. Um, I just, I have watched some other accounts talk about how much money they have spent and they've been in the hole for like two years. And y'all, that just gives me such, such heart palpitations. <laughs> like, I am just not that person. So I'm not going to do that. That's not, that is not my, my business practice. Now, if you can spend and you're financially comfortable with that, then of course, do what you think is best. Um, I do have a video that I broke down how much it did cost me my first year. And so, um, to give you actual numbers, um, it isn't cheap. It, it really isn't. I mean, in some things you can do on a shoestring, but you also have to take into account that sometimes cheap is expensive. And so what I mean by that is sometimes going the cheapest route is not always the best viable route. So um, when you ask me, do I think that $5,000 is enough to start a flower farm? I'm going to go back to you and say, do you have $5,000 that you can just give away? Because truthfully, when you start calculating how many stems you need to grow to make up for that 5,000, y'all, it's like 5,000 stems. Think about it at a dollar a stem. That's like 5,000 stems. That's a lot of flowers. Because put it into this perspective. So my raised garden beds are all three and a half foot by 30 foot. Okay. And they, when I space them six inches apart, I can get 300 um, blooms in one box. So if you start to do that math, 10 boxes, just 10 boxes is only 3,000 flowers. So you really need to double that. You need to have 20 of those boxes and you'd have to have each and every one of those blooms. That, to me, is too much of the unknown. Um, and I know, look, and farming is never a sure thing. But there are calculated risks you can take. So I'm just saying that all to say only you can decide how much money you can spend. Um, again, I just think financial literacy is just a huge factor in starting any business. So off my soapbox there. But anyway, I just wanted to address that because... I thought that was, um, it was very interesting, uh, and people have different perspectives on it. So that's just mine. Take what you want, leave the rest. That's what I just say, right? Anyway, um, I do, I did film a little bit of an update on this stuff. Um, I'm going to insert it here so you can see that and my little oopsie. And then let's go out to the field while it is not raining. I'm checking on seedlings that I started like within the last four days. I just uncovered, look at this mahogany splendor, and I just watered. This is some amaranth, and this is um, uh, cosmos, and this is a new um, color for me. It's apricot lemonade, so we're going to see how they do, but y'all got about 100% germination on there. Looking at a few other things to see if they're ready to be uncovered. This, not quite yet. Um, but I did just uncover, this is the Velvet Queen Sunflowers. Look at these. Okay, and I am loving these um, by Burpee. So I think I may end up ordering a few more of those. Even though they take up more space. So that interruption was me dropping my leafas. Well, thank goodness I just started them. So, they were in here. I guess I'm going to start them again. <sighs> All right, let's see what... Oh, here's another one. Y'all, the real behind the scenes in the stem shed. Me making a mess, right? Yep, this is terracotta. These are the Pro Cut. I have not ever done this color before, but I am so excited over this germination. Again, I think I am going to order a few more of these. I truly, truly like these. I mean, they do take up a lot more space than soil blocking, but for the sunnies, um, they just seem to be really easy. Uh, and then you just pop this up like this, and, it, and you can get them out really quickly. So, let me try not to drop that. I don't have a whole lot started just because we're going to get into the heat of the summer. This is some more sunflowers here. They're not ready yet. And oh, these look like 
Oh, they're just about ready. So, I have a few things germinating in here. I'm getting these started. Oh, wait. Let's see what this is. Hold on. Oh, please. What is this? And y'all, you know, I'm trying to get rid of all of these little trays. I just can't throw them away because I just, I'm, oh, this is asters. I've not had good luck with these. Oh, but they are ready to be uncovered. So we'll see how this goes. Um, you know, I keep saying I'm trying to get away from this, this styrofoam. Um, I just hate to wait, throw away good stuff, but look, this one's cracked. So after this, I'm going to throw that one away. So this was the last, I think, of the styrofoam that I have. So I will hopefully get rid of these. Um, what is this? Oh, that's something back here peeking its head up. Let me, let's move that. And I'm going to put this on blocks so that it is a little bit closer to the light. So, let's see. Oh, this is some more asters. So, I, ha I found these. Um, I found some packs. And so, I'm just going to try them. All right. The lighting is not the greatest out here. I told you it's been funky. Um, it looked like on the rain gauge. We've had an inch of rain uh, over the last couple of hours. So, which is pretty good. I, I, you know, flowers always need the rain, um, but it makes it just a sloppy mess to come out here and try to do anything. And my big goal this weekend was I wanted to get that ranunculus bed cleared out so I could flip it to get um, the things I have started in the stem shed. Once they're hardened off, I want to put them in that bed, but it doesn't look like it's going to work this way today. So I think today's going to be a stem shed kind of day, but let's check out what what is what is happening and what's not happening all right i had to flip y'all right and i'm going to try to hold you as steady as i can i had to take it off the tripod but okay so this was that very first bed that i put down that was a lot of cool season i mean now you can see my status has just gone crazy it has been it has been a great um producer and so i do have that my lumbata is coming in which i absolutely love i experimented with um yeah scabiosa i experimented with that but like this calendula needs to be pulled up so um some of that if you remember um i have a good friend of mine who's in michigan who sit who actually mailed me all these gladiola bulbs love them um they seem to be doing well that's the pathetic snapdragons right there yeah that sucked um same thing over here just that's just terrible so that's all about to be pulled up um i'm gonna leave these straw flowers here and see what happens this bed i just got planted out <clears throat> a couple of uh about a week or so ago this is all uh marigolds and zinnias and they are looking they are actually looking really good now we did bring in another load of topsoil that looked even di it looked different than the first load we had which was in some of these other beds so we are thinking there may have been an issue with that topsoil so you know again lesson learned all right so let's go down here this bed um ugh. oh it's so yucky so these are the zinnias right here. They are looking, they're actually looking good. It looks like I'm getting some to bud. I'm going to go through and cut them. Have some celosia down there. Um, a few more marigolds. And look, I know this looks like it is, it is just a mixed match of things. Just because I was in a hurry to get some things in when I realized these beds were not performing. So I did do some more status because I do like to dry status. So I have that. This is straw flowers. Looks like I have a little bit of a bloom there. Um, just not, not excited. Even my yarrow is not, is just not performing. So yeah, I'm just not, these beds, I'm just over. Then this is the perennial bed. Um, let's check this out. So this is all of the eucalyptus. And so it looks, it looks okay. Um, I do have them planted kind of close together. And once they get a good system on them, I will probably, uh, I will probably move them around a bit. 
but for right now they're in in the perennial bed down at this end I have mountain mint and then I have I don't know what I'm gonna put here yet I have not made a decision so I'm just leaving that open and then of course we have <sighs> The failed ranunculus bed. So all of that needs to come up. Um, would love to have done that today. Not going to happen. Uh, you can hear it thundering in the background. So, But I do also want to show you this. So if you follow, my, follow me on Instagram, I've talked about this in my stories. Ooh, okay. This is my experimental dahlia patch. <laughs> So I did try to grow a few dahlias um, over the last couple of years in the field. They didn't do well. It was just an, it was just terrible. So I am trying them in grow bags. So the first three rows here are all dahlias. Y'all look how big they're getting. So I'm, I'm going to end up having to stake those and net them. Then these are mums. So uh, I'm trying these in the grow bags as well, and they are looking really healthy. So this is my experimental patch. It is under um, a big shade tree so that when it gets really hot, instead of using shade cloth, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rely on this tree. In the afternoons especially, this all gets shaded. Actually, all the way to the second box there, the shade is covered with this tree. So, so we've taken a moment on getting the whole... Um, getting more beds done until I can do something with these cool season uh, beds. So that's an update from the field. All right, that was an update from the field. Just kind of short and sweet, giving you a, 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 a real look at behind the scenes. Um, so what's next? So I kind of hinted around to this in a few videos, over the last few videos, but I didn't want to say anything until I got everything in place and um, paperwork sign. So last year I applied for a high tunnel through um, the Natural Resources Conservation Services and RCS through USDA. And I had found out about it late and I had, we just went ahead and submitted the application and I missed the deadline so I did not get into that funding. So because I had done that, it automatically got put into this year's funding and we were approved. Um, we went two weeks ago, um, right before my trip, actually um, the uh, Monday before my trip and signed all of the final paperwork, the contract and everything to get um, to start the process for um, purchasing the high tunnel. So if you don't know about this program, you can do um, a quick Google search under equip, E-Q-U-I-P, under N-R-C-S, and it will tell you about it. So it is, um, it is for uh, new farmers, minorities. There's a list of, of um, ways for you to qualify. And so um, a new farmer is considered someone who's been farming less than 10 years. Um, and then I also qualify because I'm a woman farmer under minority. So um, I, it, the process was not that difficult. And I will talk more about that as we move through it. Um, and the steps that I did, I'm going to do a whole separate video on that, especially once we get it. So yesterday, which was um, Friday, May 4th, 5th, 5th, May 5th, yes, yesterday was Cinco de Mayo. Um, we called the company that we we're going to be dealing with. It is someone local to us. Um, it's about two hours north of us. Um, and put our order in and put down the deposit. And so in five weeks, it should be ready for pickup. So... We are super excited. Learning to grow in a high tunnel is going to be a new challenge. Um, it's going to we're going to have a learning curve, but we're really excited to do it. It's going to go out into the flower field um, behind um, that border the woods. So we're going to put it there. So we have a lot of um, things that we're going to be working on. So we are like super excited. Um, but once we get that, once we get it here, and I can show you the kit and all of that, I'm going to do. I'll do a complete. Um, video on from having to go visit my USDA people to go into another office for NRCS and I'll talk about what that looked like. So yay! So cool things happening on the farm. Um, 
I think that's all I've got for y'all today. I want to hurry up and quickly go harvest some more sunflowers real quick um, before it starts raining again. So, hope you all have a wonderful day. And until we meet again, my friends, I hope you're turning all your daydreams into a reality.